I'm here today because a year ago, any hope of higher education may have remained a dream if it weren't for the arts. As a teacher, excuse me, as a teenager and undocumented immigrant, I did my best to be a regular American. But when I heard my classmates malign undocumented immigrants calling us illegal, saying we were the root of the problems in the U.S., I felt my value as a person slip away. And then in my sophomore year of high school, my, teach, my art teacher, Mr. Kelsey, noticed I had a talent and encouraged me to hone that talent. Going into my junior year, I learned that Temple University's Tyler School of Art was selecting five high school students to participate in its Youth Advisory Council. A shot in the dark, I applied and was invited to join, and it was in that moment that my feelings about myself started to change. During my time with the YAC, <laughs> during my time with the YAC, um, sorry, I lost my trick. I experienced art within a social context. I began to see that art wasn't just a byproduct of a cathartic hobby. I learned that the real virtue of art lies in its power to bring people together, to build a community and a safe space where you can be vocal about your fears and frustrations. Art is a tool to build empathy and talk progressively about ways to find a solution. While in the Youth Advisory Council, I encountered Fleischer Art Memorial and joined their teen lounge program, become, becoming further exposed to the arts. Eventually, I became an art uh, an assistant educator between, uh, sorry, eventually I became an assistant educator at Fleischer. Between Fleischer and the Youth Advisory Council, I was open to an entire community eager to embrace me. I learned about advocacy and realized that art and education are deeply intertwined. After graduating from high school, I had no hope of going to college. As an undocumented immigrant, I'm not eligible for in-state tuition in Pennsylvania. Because I'm not a U.S. citizen, I'm not elig eligible for guaranteed student loans. Although my parents are hardworking, they make, just, they make just enough to make ends meet and I could not rely on them for help. I took a year off from school and worked at several internships as well as on my art portfolio. Shortly after applying to Temple, I learned that I was awarded the portfolio prize for in full in-state tuition. But even though I have been living in Pennsylvania since I was six, because, because of my immigration status, they would not consider me in-state. In order for me to go to college, I had to come up with an extra $15,000 a year of out-of-state tuition. Fortunately for me, through the Youth Advisory Council, I met people at Tyler and in the Philadelphia art community. They knew my ambition and talent and immigrant status and were willing to help me. These people are my, excuse me, these people are my village, my champions, and I'm proud to say I'm going to my sophomore year at Tyler School of Art. But it is to my great disappointment that many other students in my position have not been as fortunate. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. Every... Every year, on average, 65,000 undocumented immigrants graduate from high school, and many of them are hardworking students identical to their American peers. Of those students, only 5 to 10 percent manage to attend college, and many don't manage to go all the way through. This, this story could have been a completely different ending, but the arts granted me an opportunity to break the cycle, to create the, the narrative of an undocumented immigrant that is different from what people in America are taught to believe, to advocate for my cause, and to change my life. It is a tragedy that the arts are being removed from schools. By no, long, by, lo, excuse me, by no longer having touch with the arts, students are losing one of the last remaining platforms to form communities, to build empathy, and to foster change. The arts, turn, excuse me, <laughs> the arts transcend borders. The arts connect people. Engaging in the arts helps me to be the person I imagine myself to be and not what others say I am. And now my, high, my higher education equips me to make positive changes in my life. Arts education and advocacy Open the door for me and I walk through, but there are a thousand others that remain closed. Art creates access and fosters change. We must do everything we can to vanguard against those that would threaten it. The arts must be protected and invested in and must remain an integral part of every student's education. So that's it. Thank you. But I can keep, I can keep talking. I can keep... Uh, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just... It's been a... Very interesting journey. How much time do I have actually? Four minutes? Go, the process of going to university because, like you were saying, uh, Sabrina, right? uh, the fixation with excellence and how unfair it is to other students who are unable to secure themselves in education. Because it, when you have to prove that you are better than everybody else for the position and you still get receive pushback, and you need an entire community to justify your existence within a university setting. That means that the university doesn't value your life, it doesn't value your input. It's only once they've defended you and validated you that you get to actually exist within this institution. And 
and when you exist within that kind of dynamic, there's that hundreds of thousands of other people who want an education just as badly as you do, but they weren't equipped with the tools to justify their existence within the university the same way you were. And um, yeah, it's just, like I'm very grateful for my position, but it's not fair for everybody else. I, I was fortunate enough to know people within, you know, be, partic if I had never contacted Tyler and started being introduced into the arts, I would have never kind of gone down the path that started securing me more and more support and uh, basically changing my life. Like, I graduated high school with a 2.1 GPA, and that's not because I didn't care about my education, but my GPA reflected my worth and my contributions to society. And what it wasn't saying was that I would have to go, every night I would be working with my parents, we'd work until 2 a.m. to try to come, like, be at our families, to support ourselves, stay afloat. But whenever I go back to school, all that my GPA said was that I was a kind of mediocre student, not capable of doing much. Upon graduation, that's what would have, that's where the narrative would have ended. I would have continued living the same life that my parents lived. Um, and it, it was through the arts that I was able to kind of become an advocate once again and prove that I have more to contribute than just my undervalued labor and kind of learn the confidence that I don't have to be ashamed for, be, for being undocumented. I was just placed in an unfortunate circumstance. You know, I have so much to contribute. And there's hundreds of thousands, well, actually 11 million other people, um, who are just as eager to, be, to contribute to the society, but they're not able to because they're vilified in the media. And the only way to gain support is to go out there and tell your story. Because when the story is left to media and reducing you to a number, you, it's hard to empathize with the digit that's meant to like translate all this tragedy, and um, yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, but yeah, so through the arts, I learned to be my own advocate. But because it's these, this tool is being removed from schools, all marginalized groups, not just undocumented immigrants, uh, are losing a tool to become advocates, to be able to build community, communities amongst themselves and kind of engender dialogue and protest these issues that are very pressing to them. Because when we think of art and so, uh, think of it as a commodity, we allow the, these political conversations to exist within the walls of a gallery, like a gallery setting. Like that's not where the real talking should happen. It should happen between communities. There should be dialogue. That's, uh, the, the dialogue in a gallery setting is always reserved to the, the elite. That's why contemporary art is always so intimidating. It's, it's like a few select individuals from a high tier of society pretending that they're being knowledgeable and talking about these issues because it makes them feel intelligent. And when you give the arts back to the people, it becomes a tool to foster change. It's not just you know something for sport. But yeah, thank you. <laughs>